Hey, I'm Kai, and today I will be walking you through my workflow in Blender. Uh, all the models you see on the screen here um, I made in AssetForge, and I then put into Blender and I rendered them. And in this video I will show you the steps I take to achieve this specific look, and I hope it's, uh, I hope it's helpful for you. Here we are in Blender. Uh, I'm using Blender 2.8. If you're following along in different version of Blender, there might be some minor differences. Also, I will be assuming you have some uh, basic Blender knowledge. All right, let's get this show on the road. Uh, first things first, we're going to change some of the default settings. Um, I'm going to change the render engine to Cycles, and because we're going to be doing uh, lots of test renders, we want those to be a lot quicker. And so we're going to change the render sampling from 128 to 32. Uh, similarly, we want our viewport display to be a lot faster, so I'm going to set that from 32 to 16. Alright, wonderful. Uh, let's delete the default cube, we won't need that. And let's actually import our model. Go into File, Import, uh, OBJ, that's the file type I'm using for this, and hit Import. So now we have our uh, workbench here in all its glory. Um, we have to do a couple of things first, so let's go into the object data and we have to click clear custom split normals data. Uh, this removes like uh, some normal data and that can cause uh, some minor glitches if we don't do this. Uh, secondly, uh, we can see the colors are a little bit faded. Uh, I guess if you put it on the rendered mode you can see that a little bit better. Uh, to fix this, we go into color management and we set the transform from filmic, which is Bender's default, which is good for realism, but not necessarily for our purposes. So we're going to change that from filmic to standard. Uh, Alright, it's wonderful. Uh, our next step is to set the scene a little for our, um, for our little render over here. Um, so let's add a background and by adding a plane. I'm going to scale that up by quite a lot. And by hitting numpad zero, you can change to your camera's view. And by scaling up the plane, just make sure that the plane covers the entirety of the camera's uh, screen. Uh, while we're at it, we're going to change the camera settings a little bit. Um, change it to 4, let's see, minus 4, and 4, and 60, 0, and 45, which is like um, some like default preset that I use. Um, I start with that and I can still tweak it a little later. Uh, we're also going to decrease the size of our workbench because it's a little big now, so let's you know, make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, this looks good. And I like to duplicate it and make two of them so that you can see a little bit of the detail on the other side. Uh, I'm going to put this one here, Shift D to duplicate, R to rotate, minus 90. Uh, let's see what that looks like. Alright, that looks pretty good. You can uh, move the camera down a little. A little back, a little down. Yeah, I like that. Alright, we're going to have to tweak our lighting just a little. Um, we're going to change from a point light to a sunlight. We're going to lower the strength. Uh, let's put it on 2. And change the angle to 45 degrees. Alright, looking pretty, pretty slick. Um, one thing I like to do, which is missing currently, is I like to add some ambient occlusion. And uh, Cycles uh, doesn't really have a good way of doing that quickly, so we're going to have to manually adjust uh, all the materials a little. I'm going to click this, and currently our materials all have like these default names from, from when I imported them, so I'm just going to quickly take some time now and rename these to something that makes some more sense. Alright, perfect. Now that we've got some material names that make a little more sense, we can uh, move on to adding some ambient occlusion. Uh, to do that, we're going to go over to the shading tab, and I'm just going to reset the view, hitting numpad 0, and going back to rendered mode, and selecting our 
workbench, going into the materials tab. Let's expand this a little. And yeah, so basically we want to have uh, ambient occlusion for, for all of these materials. Uh, we're going to have to do that manually. And to do this, we're going to have to add uh, two nodes. The first node we're adding is the ambient occlusion node. And we're going to just plug this in for testing purposes. If you plug this into the base color, you can see, yeah, there is ambient occlusion now. Um, we're going to fix the color in a, in a later step, but first, if you can see, you know, that, that if you increase the distance, we get more ambient occlusion, and if we lower the distance, we get, you know, less ambient occlusion. I'm going to put that at uh, 0.1 for now. Uh, I like to have a little bit more control of my ambient occlusion, and to do this, we're going to add the second node, which is a color ramp. We're going to splice this in between uh, the ambient occlusion and the standard uh, principle BSDF node. Alright, so now if I slide the lower uh, part here, you can see that I add, it gets a little, little darker. So there's more ambient occlusion, but it's a better, I prefer this way of sliding around my ambient occlusion. It gives me a little bit more uh, control. Alright, so great. Um, now, basically the one thing that's missing is that this is still, this is white and not the color that we need it to be. Um, so I'm going to unconnect these two for a second and I'm going to hit the white node here. Click on the color node and I'm going to color pick the base color on this table light material. I'm going to reconnect the two. Alright, so now you can see we have the correct color. We have... Um, or ambient occlusion and we have this color ramp slider which we can slide up to get more ambient occlusion or down to get less ambient occlusion. Uh, lastly what I like to do is I don't like my ambient occlusion to be black but I like it to be just a very dark purple or a dark blue which makes it a little more subtle. Alright we now have uh, our ambient occlusion set up for our table light material but we want to have ambient occlusion on all of our materials. So we are going to have to copy this effect to every other material. You can do that by uh, selecting both of the nodes and uh, hitting Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl V to paste into our wood dark material. Now we have to color pick the base color again and connect the color with the base color. And we have to repeat this for pretty much every material we want ambient occlusion on, which is all of the materials. Alright, perfect. So now we've got ambient occlusion on every single material. We've got it all set up. Great. Let's move on to the next step. Actually, before we move on, let's go ahead and uh, color our background a little. So we're going to select our plane and we're going to add the metal blue material to the background. Uh, just to avoid any confusion later on, let's duplicate the material and let's call this background. Alright, great. Alright, let's head on over to our layout tab to see what our uh, render looks like. Alright, it's looking pretty good. Um, I think it could use a little more lighting. So let's go ahead and add that. Let's go to a light. Let's add a spotlight. Let's put this uh, a little bit higher. Yeah, sure. And it doesn't do anything right now because the power is set way too low. So we're gonna set that to like 600. All right, that's, that's cool. Like a little spotlight here. Uh, let's go ahead and Increase the blend to 100, which sort of softens the edges a little bit. And let's add another light. Let's add a point light. We're going to put uh, up two meters into the air. Yeah. And we're going to set that to, and let's go ahead and set it to 50, because we, we just want the, like, the backboards here to be uh, lit a little more. So if I, if I just disable this for a second, you can see that this is a little dark. And you can see if I just enable and disable this a little, you can see that it adds uh, a lighting right there. 
All right, that's pretty nice. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do a uh, a test render. See what it looks like by now. All right, looking pretty cool. Um, some more detail we could add is to have the reflective materials like the screwdrivers and the hammer and this vise actually be like uh, metallic and refl reflect a little uh, light. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go back into the shading tab. Let's click our model. Let's see. Okay, so this metal blue definitely needs some uh, reflectiveness. You can achieve this by uh, lowering the roughness to, yeah, I guess, almost zero, turning the specular way up, and metallic a little bit. Let's, uh, let's have a test. Alright, yeah, you can see, especially in the vise here, you can see it reflects the table a little, and it has, it receives more light, basically, so it looks a little brighter. Alright, yeah, looks good. Um, so we're gonna copy this principle to BSDF material and we're gonna apply it to all of the things that uh, should be a little metallic. So this metal material, let's just delete this, plug in this. And metal light too, sure. Plug in color and surface. And I guess this black can be a little bit darker too. Alright, let's have a look. Alright, looks looks pretty good. You can see like the metal reflects the floor a little. There's a little blue in there. And yeah, I like this. I think it looks good. Alright, I think we're almost ready to render. But before we do, let's change to the layout tab again. Uh, we're gonna change uh, a couple of things. Uh, basically, I like to have my renders feel a little more cartoony, and one way to achieve that is to have a little more contrast. So under color management, uh, where it says look, I like to put it to either you know, one of these three options. Let's go for high contrast for this, and you can see like it adds it adds some contrast, but it also makes the whole image you know pop a little more. It's just a personal preference. You don't have to do this, but it's just how I achieve. Uh, these looks that I like. And then for the final render, we're going to put the uh, render sample to 256. And under the uh, layer tab, we're going to hit denoising, which uh, after the render, it removes uh, some of the grain uh, that you can see. All right, it looks like we're all set up. Let's go ahead and give this a render. Alright, so there we have it, the final render. Just one, one thing left to do, which is hit image, save as, and we're done. I hope this video was either entertaining or helpful to you, and if you have any questions or suggestions on what you would like to see next, feel free to drop a comment below. Anyways, that's it for me. Thanks for watching and goodbye.